Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Russia's Navy. The program aimed at helping us uh, to keep ourselves in check with our work with the Lord, to always remind ourselves how we need to balance our lives in our day-to-day -day activities and not forget the fact that we are believers. You are welcome to this week's edition. I'm going to introduce the man of God as usual, Pastor George, welcome to the platform. Thank you so much. Um, glad to be here. It's always an honor to speak to God's people. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So today we are going to be talking about the importance of righteousness in both our private life and our public life. How we carry ourselves, how we want to live our lives both in public and in private. When we are alone, when no one is watching us, when no one is looking at what we are doing, why is it important that we should live a righteous life? Pastor Jim. All right, now that's um, a wonderful topic. Um, you know, when you were just introducing the topic, I was, I was thinking to myself, how many people understand what it means to live a righteous, uh, a holy life? So, uh, beloved says, when you make a decision, to be born again when you make a decision that you are going to accept Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior it means that has an effect on the way you will live going forward so it's not just a cheap decision and that's one of the reasons why we came up with this program righteous living as it helps us to measure our way of life in everything that we are doing, wherever we go, and so much more. So, there is a dimension of living you can only experience when you make Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. In that dimension, this um, it's where Jesus becomes real to you. It's where you see Jesus in everything and everywhere you go. So, it's not like you have... Uh, particular places where there is God and particular places you forget who God is to you and who you are in the eyes of God. So uh, as you discover how to behold his power, the power of God becomes alive in your life. Now, let's read a scripture that is going to give us um, the slight difference between righteousness and holiness. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 24. The Bible says you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So you are able to see that those two words are used in that scripture. You put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So now the scripture shows us that there is a difference between righteousness and holiness. These are two different things. Now Righteousness is not what you attain later on. Righteousness is what happened to you when you got born again. It's the nature you inherited when Jesus became part of your life or when you gave your life to God or when you received the life of God the moment you got born again. Okay, so you were made righteous when you met Jesus, the Lord of your life. You provided right standing with God for you at the cross. Don't forget. He who knew no sin became sin so that you and I could become the righteousness of God. But holiness is slightly another matter. So now what is holiness in important? It simply means separation to God. That is holiness. Separation to God. Okay? Conduct that shows we are separated. That's what it is. So when God says, be holy, for I am holy, he's saying, live lives that show you belong to me. Live lives that will separate you from the common life in the world. So to separate is to set apart, to disunite, to divide, you know, to take away, that to filter, so there are many words that we can synonymously use in the place of what holiness is. 
you know, it's more like what happens to the moment you um, cream is separated from milk. You know, something comes on top. So that, that is what holiness is. So when we get born again, there is a higher standard. There is a higher expectation. That's why Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required, much is expected. Another version says, much is demanded. So when you get born again, I want you to know that you have entered a realm of life where a lot is expected of you. It's not a cheap life. It's not a cheap life. So many people struggle to live a holy life because they don't know what it means to be holy. They don't know what it means to be righteous. So when you understand the basic different difference between these two terms, it will help you to live a certain way. So holiness, um, Mrs. Zou, in simple terms, is associated to the daily decisions that you make. That's holiness. You decide to live a certain way. It's a decision of your will. It is what you choose to do with your life. It is your conduct. Choosing to live according to the laws, the will of God. That is holiness. So in short, holiness is doing those things that please God. It is what you do with your time, your actions, the people that you associate with. It is living to please God. Holiness produces fruit. So like one man of God, he said, holiness is not a fruit. Holiness is the root that bears fruit. Yes. So, um, in other words, living a holy life is not the way to God. It is a byproduct of being born again. That is why it is expected of you. So it is not like we live holy trying to get God's attention. No. He loved us even before we were born. We got born again while we were still sinners. That is why even the Bible says that even our good works are still as filthy rights. So there is nothing that can qualify you in the in the eyes of God. What qualifies you is righteousness. We we explain the concept of righteousness. Righteousness is what you received when you got born again. Okay. Yes. So Pastor. Maybe we'll continue next week because this topic seems to be dropped. Yes. But uh, before we can close, mm. uh, why is it important that someone should live a righteous life or a holy life, even in their private life? What is the importance? Because it's very easy that someone can pretend or maybe uh, portray a certain picture of themselves in public when somebody is watching us. Even believers, they can portray a certain picture when they are in church, when they are in public. But now, uh, it's a challenge to some people to maintain that same lifestyle when they are alone in a private place. Why is it important? Or how can somebody maintain such a life? Um, that's a profound question. I would love to say the real you is what matters. So your private life matters because number one, it matters to God. So we need to avoid pretending because when all is said and done, we're going to face God alone. So our private life is important because it matters to God. The Bible says we are, we are going to appear before God. We are going to give an account. We are going to give an account. So when you understand that, you come to a point where pretending will not be helpful. It will be something that we're just going to push away because you know when all is said and done. The Bible says man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. So that scripture tells us that God knows the real you. In Hebrews 4 verse 13, the Bible says there is nothing that is hidden in the eyes of God. Everything lies open, naked and bare before him. So we need to live a transparent life before God. That is our first and foremost assignment. We are accountable to God. Then, it is also important to live a holy and righteous life privately because it spills over whether you like it or not. 
your private life will affect you publicly. Eventually. It may not be immediate, but it will spill over. For there is nothing that is hidden. So now, um, I think there are many ways that can help us to live a holy and righteous life. I think for today I'm just going to, to, to share one. I will be taking my time and that's why we've been limiting our episodes maybe to, to, to less than 10 minutes, 10 minutes, maybe maximum 15 minutes because there is so much that people have to learn. So now, you live holy because you are motivated by your relationship with God. We love because He first loved us. We forgive because He first forgave us. So you are responding to the love of God. You are, you are responding to the nature of God. So how can you live a righteous and holy life both privately and publicly? I'm going to talk about how you should disconnect yourself from the world privately and publicly. So let's read Romans 12 verse 2. The Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. So do not allow the world to make you its own image. The Bible says we were made in the image of God. So now to, to conform is to have the likeness of the world. So when the Bible says do not conform to the pattern of this world, the Bible is saying do not look like the world. Do not do the things of the world. Do not think like the world. Do not talk like the world. So the Bible warns us again and again that there, is, there should be a line drawn between us and the world. It's very clear in many portions of scripture in the word of God. That means our thoughts, our actions, our words, our behaviors should be noticeably different from those of the world. First Peter 1.15, the Bible says, as the one who caught you is holy, you yourselves also be holy in all your conduct and manner of living. Manner of living. So it's very sad. That's not how many people, including believers, live. There are many people that go to church on Sunday, they act all nice. That's the reason why, even in our native language, there are people that will say, No, Usan Chimis, later on Sunday. Don't cause me to sin because it's Sunday, a day of worship. So there are people that believe there are particular days that are are reserved for God, where we are supposed to conduct ourselves this way. This should not be the case. We have been set apart as holy. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 10 tells us that we are supposed to be reserved. We are supposed to live holy lives on a daily basis. To be set apart means we are not living like the world, like I said. We are not thinking like the world. We are not looking like the world. We are not dressing like the world. We are not dealing with things like the world. Okay, we are not sick like the world. We are not broke like the world. Not without resources and the power of God like the world. We are not engaging in sin like the world. Instead, we are separated from the world. Jesus says, you are in the world, but you are not of the world. So now, how can we do this? There is a lot that we can do, but first and foremost, we need to mind what we feed on. That, that is why the Bible says, we should not love the world or the things in the world. So, it's beyond the surface information where we are taught do not love the world but it's got to do with the things that are also found in the world in this world where sexual sin where violence vulgar or foul language drunkenness are celebrated promiscuity you know and faithfulness these things are celebrated you will see that godliness Christian values are laughed at we are still expected to live in a way that is going to please God. That is why 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says, don't team up with those who are believers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? So righteousness is a nature 
we are expected to live differently. How can light live with darkness? So we should minister to non-Christians through our way of lives. It is beyond words of our mouths. It is beyond what we profess. It's about the way we live and so much more. Because if we are not going to be careful, this will have an effect on our lives, which is negative. James chapter 4 verse 4 tells us, if you are going to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of, an enemy of God. So sometimes it can feel challenging to, to be set apart because it means we are supposed to stand out. Where others are enjoying, sometimes we need to refrain. Where others are partying, we need to keep ourselves away. As long as it is something that takes you away from God, you must be able to avoid it. John chapter 17 verse 14, Jesus said, the world hates them because they do not belong to the world. So the world will hate us as long as we don't belong to it. We are going to be hated. And it says, we should always remind ourselves that it first hated Jesus. So great blessings and honor come to those who are persecuted for the sake of God. We find that in Matthew chapter 5, the step. We also find that in 1 Peter chapter 3. Now, 1 John chapter 2. Love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the Bible says the love of the Father is not with them. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes not from the Father but from the world. So now, as I'm about to conclude, I want to make it clear to us that when you got born again, you were transmitted, you were moved from darkness into light, which is the kingdom of God's Son. We find that mentioned in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. You were taken and lifted out of darkness. You were separated. Now you can go back to that dark world, not to be darkened, but to shine your light where there is darkness to preach about the light of God. So now, if we want to live a life, we must be disconnected from the world and its ways. And we must be connected to God and the ways of God. So now, there are people that say, we are just human beings. But the Bible has told us, we are in the world, but we are not of the world. So if we understand that, it's going to help us to live a life that is pleasing to God. Hallelujah. So now, I think one of these days, I will need to teach us and explain. I will need to teach us and explain what the world means. And I will explain even on the things that are found in the world. I think we can end there for today. Thank you so much, Pastor. So there we have it. We learned that it's important that we should live our lives upright, both in private and in public, because we are accountable to God. Yes. We are going to give account to the Lord on how we live our lives every day. Yes. Thank you so much, Pastor. That was so helpful. Until we meet again, it's me, Mrs. God bless you.